Hello, welcome to module 11 of NPTEL University course on Point Set Topology Part 2. So, today we shall pick up another important topic paracompact spaces. Among several notions of compactness, some of them we are going to study, it seems that Paracompactness is the best which captures certain features of compactness and yet encompasses a large class of interest in topological spaces. The feature that we are looking for is, as usual, having a large number of continuous real waved functions on a space. So this is one of the interesting properties of paracompactness that we will prove. So let us begin with a formal definition or two. Take any set and two families of subsets of x, f1 and f2. We say f1 is a refinement of f2 if every member of f1 is contained in some member of F2. Okay, it may be contained in more than one member. Pay attention to this one. I am not saying that family sub F1 is not a subfamily of F2. Not necessarily. Sometimes it is possible. Actually, if F1 is a subfamily of F2, then this condition is obvious. Because you can take the member here, the same member will be there in F2, you can take that. So, that, that member will contain itself, right? So, refinement is much, much better than, much something to do much better actually. It comes from the practice of giving a subdivision of the interval 0, 1 or interval AB. You are taking another of subdivision which you call it as subdivision you know different divisions are there but subdivision that subdivision thing is refinement here okay the word refinement is used here in the context of f2 is a cover for x which just means that members of f2 you know together they contain all the points of x. Union of members of f2 is x. In that context, we will use the same word refinement for a slightly stronger you know, meaning. Namely, f1 is a refinement of f2 only if f1 is also a cover of x. And the old condition, namely each member of f1 is contained in some member of f2. So if this is a cover, this should be also a cover. F1, F2 is a cover, then F1 must be also a cover. If X is a topological space, a refinement in which all members are open, respectively closed, will be called an open refinement or a closed refinement accordingly. Okay, so so far we have actually made four different definitions here. Okay, suppose now X is a topological space. We say a family F of subsets of X is locally finite if at each point X in X there exists an open set U such that X is in U and U intersects only finitely many members of F. Okay, so this is not the property of the space, it is just the property of the family of subsets inside a topological space. Similarly, we will have another definition later on, what is called as point finite, which just means that a given point can be found at most in finitely many members of F. Okay. Clearly, locally finite implies point finite, but not the converse. 
Anyway, I will recall the point finiteness when it is necessary. The following two simple results are the keys for usefulness of this local finiteness. Okay. So these are the two things here. Namely, take a family U of subsets of X, which is locally finite. Then if you take union of all the closures that is another family u is inside u but i have taken closures now that will be also locally finite the second thing is union of u bars okay remember if you have finite union then the closure is the union as a closure but if uh, if this is an uh, infinite union, then this may not hold. But here is the case where it is possible. Namely, union of U bars is also closed. Okay. So it is in particular, it's, it's, you know, it is the closure of all the union. Okay. So that is because local finite. Okay, so let us uh, have a look at it, how this works. Given x, the first part, a, I want to show that u bar is also locally finite. Let v be a neighborhood of x in which, uh, such that v intersects only finitely many members of u. If u is in, u, u, u inside u is such that v intersection u is empty, then V intersection U bar is also empty because V is an open subset. Okay. Therefore, V intersects only finitely many members U bar. It may V may intersect only those U i bars when U it intersects U i if at all if it intersects U i itself. Therefore, this also finite. That's all. Now, part B is slightly more complicated. Actually, this we have seen in part 1. Number 9, I will repeat it. Take a point in the closure of this set. Namely, I have already taken U bar, U inside U, but I have taken the union. Then I don't know whether it is closed. I want to show you it is closed. So take the closure. That must be inside one of them is what I have to show, right? If it is inside the union of U bar, it must be inside one of the U bars. Okay. So first of all, choose a open neighborhood Wx of x such that Wx intersects only finitely many members of U bar. This U bar U inside U. This is possible because of part A. Just now we have proved that. So let us list these members u1 bar, u2 bar, un bar. We claim that x must be in one of these u1 bar, u2 bar, un bar. Okay. That will be enough. After that, it will follow that x is inside the union of u bar itself. Suppose this is not the case. Then what happens for each i, we would get a neighborhood wi of x such that wi intersection ui bar must be empty because it is not in ui bar. Okay, this is a closed subset already. So I can took, I could have taken the complement of this u, uh, wi bar for wi, that's all. Okay, now you take w equal to all these wi's intersection along with the original wx that is a neighborhood of x now then this w will be a neighborhood of x okay and this w intersection all the u bars will be empty the entire union of u bar will be empty which just means that point x is not in the closure of this. So that is absurd because you started the point which is in the closure. 
okay now let us make a definition what we are aiming at a space is called para compact if each open cover for it has a locally finite open refinement okay i want to recall each of these terms once again you have an open cover okay let us call this as f2 a refinement now means first of all each member of this refinement say f1 is contained in member of f2 union of members of f1 will be the whole of x because i started with f2 as a cover for x and then finally it must be locally finite at each point of x there must be an open neighborhood which will intersect at the most finitely many members of this refinement for each open cover if you have locally finite open refinement such a space will be called para compact it is somewhat similar to the definition of compactness wherein each open cover has a finite sub cover we are not insisting on a finite sub cover first of all finiteness is replaced by local finiteness which is much much weaker <clears throat> not only that we are not insisting upon that this is a sub cover of the original cover it's a refinement so you can put more open sets here but they will be smaller so that is the beauty of this one since any finite family is automatically locally finite it follows that a compact space is automatically para compact you start with any open cover first take a finite you know sub cover that will be a refinement already now you take a refinement you don't have to because any any sub cover is a refinement you don't have to worry about local finiteness because this is already finite so automatically it is finite also so compact spaces are para compact para compactness is very useful study very very useful in the study of manifolds in the absence of compactness in fact it is also useful in more than you know manifolds which are called simplicial sets simplicial complexes and then what are called as cw complexes and so on okay so i will not much i can't dwell much into that one those are the things which are studied in algebraic topology a locally compact lindelof space is para compact so we are now up to what are the kind of uh, spaces which will become para compact what kind of conditions we can put to ensure para compactness of course definition is there finally but how to verify so suppose you know something is locally compact and lindelof that is para compact so this is the second kind of uh, result here because easy one was compact implies para compact okay so this is very profound result actually the proofs the proof itself is very very illuminating so you should pay attention to that okay so the first step i am going to prove them in separate steps so that you can just uh, remember the step itself is a, a kind of property first step is that there is a sequence of open sets un in x such that each un bar is compact un is contained inside un bar contained inside un plus 1 x is the union of uns so every locally compact lindelof space can be written as 
union of open sets increasing union such that the closures are compact okay so that is what we are going to prove using local compactness and hence regularity for each x belonging to x we first find open sets ax such that x is in ax and ax bar is compact we don't uh, need to assume that ax bar is contained inside some 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 subset and so on right now using the lindelof property we find a countable subcover from ax x belonging to x for each x i have put an open subset ax so this is an open cover for x every open cover of a lindelof space admits a countable subcover let us rewrite this countable subcover dropping out x here i will write it as a1 a2 an and so on to be precise you may want to write it as ax1 ax2 and so on we don't worry about the point x we are only worried about this countable sequence of open sets whose closures are compact that is what we are worried about what is the extra property union of all ans is the whole space x so you see part of that has already come but now we have to arrange them so that the entire thing becomes increasing union okay so this is again quite useful this kind of argument is quite useful in measure theory you start with one of them any one of them so i have already enumerated them so take u1 equal to a1 since u1 bar is compact okay and all these ais together cover this u1 bar so a finitely many of them will cover it right so there is some n1 such that u1 bar is contained in the union of a1 a2 an1 okay take u2 to be the union of these finite many of the first n1 of them carrying from 1 to n1 so each ak is open remember so u2 is an open set okay it contains this a1 this it contains u1 and if you take the closure of u2 that will be equal to closure of you know union of the closures of ak's therefore it is compact being a union of finitely many compact sets okay so what we have done is setting up an iteration process here u1 has been fattened to u1 bar which is fattened further to u2 which is the open set and u2 bar is compact now we will repeat it repeat the same procedure for u2 bar again u2 bar is contained inside the union of a1 a2 an right so there will be some finite obviously that finite number okay can be taken bigger than or equal to n2 you know in some funny cases it may happen that the new things which come they are already inside we have not arranged that one so it is possible that you don't get anything extra so but you can always take larger and larger there is finite cover after all so you can take some more nobody stops you so you can always arrange n2 to be bigger than n1 and u n bar is contained inside u3 here for n2 etc i have to say so continuously you can go on repeating this process so that u n bar is contained inside carrying from 1 to so this is u2 bar n2 ak okay that is that that is we will call it as u3 and so on and so on is there so then you can write this one so here it will be carrying from n to some n n so that is a funny notation so i don't want to write that one so the set properties are easily verified all that you have to do was property 2 and that is how we have selected this thing. there is nothing more than that 
ultimately given any point x it will be in one of the uns right because x is union of uns right and then x is in one of the ans here so therefore because this sequence is increasing strictly so some n a n k will be hit at some stage so it will be inside that un so here's a picture how things are going on we started with a1 equal to u1 the closure you can think of this one as its boundary itself is a closure taking that one so this a2 a3 a4 is covering the closure of a1 okay that is u1 bar there may be other things here but you don't have to worry about that now you take the union of a1 a2 a3 a4 as your u2 now this u2 will have a closure of that something like that that will be compact so again some u4 a4 a5 a6 etc will come which will cover u2 bar and go on okay ultimately a1 a2 an a3 and so on these will cover x therefore u1 u2 u3 will cover okay so here is a remark before we go further a space which is a countable union of compact spaces is called a sigma compact space what we have proved above implies that every locally compact lindelof space is sigma compact in a strong sense what is the strong sense that these compact subsets are actually closures of open subsets the open subsets themselves cover the whole of x so that is the strongness here so we shall study sigma compactness a little more through some exercises later on okay this is also an important uh, concept but mostly it is used in uh, analysis now let's go to the step 2 towards proving that the space is para compact so in this step we claim that any space which satisfies the property stated in step 1 is para compact so now we are not going to use local compactness or lindelofness we will just use the property 1 2 3 here that there is such a family of open subsets in x that's all we are going to use this to prove that the space is para compact okay so here is again another similar step which you have to learn start with w alpha any open cover we have to extract a locally finite open refinement for this okay for notational simplicity let us also put u not and u minus 1 and u minus 2 see we have taken u1 u2 u3 just for sim you know wherever you start we would like to have some left margin here so u not u minus 1 u minus 2 as empty and then u and onwards whatever we have okay so then you can write down inductive step very easily you can induct start induction at any of these points that is the whole idea so where u n s are chosen as the step one okay define for each n greater than or equal to 1 and each alpha i am going to concentrate on w alpha okay so everything is intersected with w alpha what i am going to do for each n look at u n minus u n minus 3 bar throw away this compact hence closed subset when you throw away a closed subset for an open subset this will be still open see i want from u n to u n minus 3 that is why i have taken that u not u minus 1 u minus 2 has uh, also have defined they are empty set in the case of n equal to 1 this sense this makes sense but it is actually u1 
because this part is empty, it doesn't matter. What I insist is, this is an open subset, this is an open subset, so this V and alpha is open subset. Okay, so this is now defined for each alpha and each positive integer n. Clearly, this is an open refinement of W alpha. So what are the things that I have to verify? Every member is contained in some member here. There is W alpha. That is fine. It is open. That is also fine. These themselves cover the whole of whole of X. Why? Because whatever it is, it is first of all in some W alpha. After that, it must be also in one of the UNs. Okay. You take the first UN for which this happens because UNs are increasing sequence of open sets covering the whole of X. So it's an open refinement. We shall find a sub cover, in fact, a countable one, which happens to be locally finite as well. Okay. So this itself may not be locally finite. So I will be pass on to a sub-cover. Sub-cover means what? It's a cover, but there only a few members will be taken. How many? Actually, you will take countably many members from the year. All right? Yeah. So this is what uh, the picture says here. This rectangular thing represents W alpha. This is the increasing union of our open subsets which cover the whole of X. These W alphas also cover the whole of X. So what I am doing here is UN minus UN minus 3 closure. So I am keeping 1, 2, 3, 3 steps away. Okay, this whole UN minus the smallest thing here, UN minus 3, I, I check it out. I take UN minus 3 closure. All these happening only inside W alpha. So you look at only this portion and subtract this portion. This heavily dotted bar is Vn alpha. Heavily dotted thing Vn alpha. As alpha varies, you will get a lot of things. Okay. After that, if you vary n, you will get the entire of the space X. Okay, so that is how Vn alphas have been constructed. Now, some family, some family of this is going to be locally finite as well as a cover. So that is what we have to find out. For each fixed n, the compact subset Un minus 1 bar minus Un minus 2 of this un minus un minus 3 bar. Okay, I am not here, I am not intersecting with with uh, with W alpha yet. Okay, so I am in, in this, in this uh, uh, concentric uh, ellipsis here. Look at the un minus un minus 3. Inside that, I have another open subset, namely un minus 1 minus un minus 2. That is what I am looking at. Only I am looking at the other way around now. Un minus 1 bar minus Un minus 2. So closure minus the open set. So this is a compact subset of this open set. Okay. All of them are covered by Vn alpha. Therefore, we will have a finitely many of them which will cover this part. Call them Fn. Those members, finitely many members, which you select to cover this one, put them inside Fn. So I have taken only finitely many members from here. They are members here, but they are here now. What is the purpose of this one? This family, okay, each member is covering this part. What does it mean? They are subsets of un minus 3 already. You, you, so they will not intersect the un minus 3 closure at all. 
So they are contained somewhere here, like that. Okay, and when you intersect with W alpha, of course. For each alpha, you have to take that. Of course, when you have taken alpha, that is where I have taken Fn. Now, here, alpha also varies, n also varies, but Fn, there are only finitely many members. The construction is over. All that I do now is put F equal to union of Fn's. Each Fn has finitely many members. So the union will have countably many members. Okay. And they are all members of Vn alpha. So this is a subfamily. A subfamily of a refinement is also a refinement. Okay. Since X is an increasing union of U n bar, given any X, let K be the smallest n such that X is in U n bar, which means that X is in U k bar, but not in U n minus k bar. So that is the smallest k. Okay. Then X will be inside U k bar minus U k minus 1. Therefore, belongs to some member of Fk plus 1. For n, it will be Fn. So, this must be an Fk plus 1. Therefore, every member of X is inside some Fk plus 1. Union of all the members, namely this F, will be a cover for X. Okay. Finally, why F is locally finite? Given any X, we take n such that x is inside u n. It is clear that u n does not intersect any member of f n plus 3. Right? So, in this picture, it is the other way around. If you take something here in u n minus 3, then members of f n will not intersect this one. So, when you index high, add 3 of them, so it will never come. So it may be inside F, uh, say suppose I, this is F1, it may be inside F2, F3, but it will not be inside F4. Therefore, it just means that this UN will not intersect any member of Fn plus 3. Up to Fn plus 2, how many members are there? Finitely many members. So UN itself will serve the purpose of local finite. Therefore, F is locally finite. So that completes the proof of this theorem. We now consider an important result that says that every paracompact Hausdorff space is normal. Similar to the result that every compact Hausdorff space is normal. On the way, we shall prove that it is regular also. So, proof is somewhat similar in that sense. Indeed, that seems to be the key step to prove it is so normal. We first have to prove regularity here. Just like in the proof of the fact that compact Hausdorff space is normal, which we have proved a couple of days before, right? So, let us go through the proof of this one. Every regular paracompact space is normal. Start with any two disjoint closed sets. Pick up a point X in A. Pick up a point, pick up an open neighborhood U A such that A belongs to U A. Contained in U A bar. Contained in the complement of B which is an open set. Okay. Then the family U A is a set A belongs to A, union A C is an open cover for X. So we have just used regularity here, A and B are disjoint sets. Now we have got an open cover. Now we use paracompactness. So let F be a locally finite open refinement of this family. And F 
prime is a subfamily with a collection of all members of f which are not contained in ac a being a refinement every member of f will be contained either in here or in some member here i don't want those which are contained in here i want to concentrate on this part so it's f prime okay in particular each member of f prime is disjoint from b okay it is not contained in a complement it should be contained somewhere so so it's disjoint from b put u equal to union of all d such that okay d belongs to f prime okay so all these open subsets which are in f prime none of them intersects b so u will not intersect b and of course a belong to a they are all covered by this one so a belongs to you a is contained in you and u intersection b is empty okay i repeat here look at members of f prime they are contained in this part okay and u a is in the complement of b c so they that's why they don't intersect b that's all okay they are open cover a so u intersection b is empty okay so we have got one part namely an open subset around a which does not intersect b right now look at f prime is locally finite because it's a sub family sub cover of it is a sub cover of it's a sub family of locally finite family which is f so f prime is locally finite therefore for each b inside b there is a neighborhood open neighborhood vb of b such that only finitely many members let us say d1 d2 dn belonging to this f prime will intersect vb so look at these dis they will have to be contained in one of these members now because members of f prime are coming from here okay so let us call them u a y u a u a 1 u a 2 u a n u a i s now you look at w b which is intersection of this v b along with the closures of closures of a i bar complement okay i am taking complement of u i that will be close subset but if you take complement of the closures that those will the open subsets finitely many intersection will be finitely intersection is also finitely many intersection so it is open so wb is a neighborhood of what b for each b then wb is a neighborhood of b and disjoint from u right so let me see why it disjoint from you because because of this one let me prove this one why this is disjoint from you once you have done that we are finished roughly okay u and v will be open subsets which are disjoint so this wb for each b we are taking okay so let us see why wb intersection u is empty wb intersection u is wb intersection d1 union d2 union dn okay that is contained in wb intersection ua1 etc uan each di is contained inside uai okay so here is containment but this is nothing but vb intersection ua1 bar u a 1 bar complement u a 2 bar complement and an intersection of this and then this union intersection of this union see the brackets are important here i am taking unions here this intersection here 
here I am taking intersection, this is also intersection. So intersection of one, two, three sets, but this itself is the intersection, this is a union. But now this is then we have VB intersection, intersections of unions. We keep one this one single, but in this union, this, this union, this, this union, this you have to take the union of all intersections now. This intersection UA1, this intersection UA2, this intersection UA n and so on. But each time UAI comes, the complement of UI by closures are there. So they are disjoint. Therefore, each member here is empty. It's a union, finite union of empty sets. So VB intersection empty sets. Okay. Therefore, VBs are each VB is disjoint from you. You now you take V to be the union of all the VBs, B running over B. So we have found out two disjoint open subsets, U and V, respectively containing A and B. That completes the proof that a regular paracompact space is normal. The next step will be proved to prove a Hausdorff para compact space is regular. Okay. So that is the next step. A Hausdorff para compact is normal. What we have to do? You have to just prove regularity and use the previous theorem. Right. So let x belong to x, u be an open subset such that x is inside u. For every y in the complement of complement of u, that is a closed subset, choose disjoint open sets ui and vy such that x is inside ui and y is inside vy. Okay. X and y are distinct, then I can do this one because it is a Hausdorff space. Now, as, as we vary y over the complement of u, okay, these vy's will cover the complement of u along with u that will be an open cover for x. So, this admits a locally finite open refinement. That is where paracompactness is used. Again, as in the previous step, Take only those members of F which are not contained in this singleton U here. Okay, they may be coming from here. They have to come. If it is not coming from here, they have to be subsets of some members here. Obviously, this being a subfamily, it is also locally finite. Take W be an, a, an open set such that x is inside w and w meets only finitely many members of f prime which we will write as w1 w2 wn each wi will be contained inside v y i v i y i is r in w is u complement okay see these steps are identical almost identical as in the previous uh, Proof of a previous theorem. Okay, idea is identical at least. Now take n to be intersection of W with u y one, u y n, where u y i s are chosen, v i s are uh, this y i s are chosen in this way. I am passing to u y ones, which are disjoint from v y ones. Okay, I don't have to take the complement and. Uh, Closures and complements and so on here. They are ready-made open subsets which are disjoint from that one. Clearly, this is an open set containing X because UIs are all neighborhoods of X here. X is inside UI for all Y. Okay. We claim that the closure of N is inside U. That will complete the regularity. X contained inside you, 
you find x contained in n contained in n bar contained in u that is the regularity okay so let v which is union of all a a inside f prime so this is an open this these are members of open so this is an open subset then v is an open set and u complement will be contained inside v because together they cover the whole thing right so members of, after all we started the fsa covering for this one right so this u and members of here they will cover the whole thing right so u c is contained inside the union of all these v therefore it is enough to show that n intersection v itself is empty if n is open subset then n intersection v bar will be also empty okay or n bar intersection sorry n bar intersection v v will be empty so n bar will be contained inside u okay so look at n intersection v same argument again w intersection u i1 intersection intersection u i n intersection with v but now expression for v i have i have written w1 union w2 un wn okay so u i ones are as it is so now you look at this w ones you can replace them by v y ones v y two each w i is contained in some v i's right so v y one v y two v y one but now when you distribute it because this is intersection u one u two u n intersection with this one so each of them intersection with one member here whichever member it will be empty so it's w intersection empty set that will be empty. so all this part proof is identical to the previous steps okay so in conclusion para compact torsdorf space is normal plus t1 is already there so it is t4 all right so we have done some major topological uh, properties of para compact spaces the next thing is functional properties namely what are called as partition of unity partition of unity is one of the major purpose of introducing para compactness by the great mathematician diodone so thank you let us uh, do this para partition of unity next time